What if I told you that you were doing your fabrics wrong? Okay, maybe not wrong, but like, what if I had some tips to make them better? Now, if you're like me, you tried downloading a PBR material of fabric for Blender, you went ahead, tossed it on your model, and it ended up coming out looking like this, which doesn't look like fabric. And what you wanted was more of a result like this. So let's talk about some tips on how I got from there to here. Tip number one, and the biggest tip in my opinion is add buzz. Now the simplest way to do this is to add a particle system to your object, add a vertex group under the density here so it only adds fuzz where you want it on your object. Go ahead, turn on simple children, then turn on the kink to curl or spiral, and then go ahead and turn the length way down and turn the particles up until you get a result you're happy with. Then add a hair node that you can use to make it so the light passes through the fuzz, giving it a more realistic look. This is certainly the easiest way to do it, but you can also use Blender's new curve-based hair system, which I have covered in another video, but this basically allows you to use curves as your hair and gives you a lot more control and flexibility over the placement of the hair and how you control the hair with sculpt brushes. Tip number two, colors. I see a lot of beginners just using flat washes of color, which can be okay for stylized art, but even then, oftentimes you're gonna wanna intermix some colors into your thread work, because when you zoom in on fabric, you'll see that there are a lot of little micro segments of colors, and oftentimes they're interweaving and blending different colors to create a richer color. And by doing this in your 3D renders, you can also yield a more realistic result. Now, tip number three may seem obvious to some, however, this is actually something something that I struggled with when I was beginning in Blender, and that's that your model needs to represent fabric and its topology. So if we go ahead and just toss a fabric material on a sphere here, we know that's a fabric material, but if we come in here and we add some cloth wrinkles or maybe some indents, you can see how it begins to read much more realistically as fabric. And this is a mistake I see a lot of beginners making, especially like when I did my clay tutorial, is that they'll take the clay material and they'll just toss it on their objects that don't have a clay shape. And this is true of any object that you add a material to. Unless you're going for an abstract look, you're gonna want that object's topology and shape to match the material that it is holding. Now, when it comes to adding these types of seams and shapes to your object, we actually have a lot of tools in Blender for free. You can go ahead, grab these scrape brushes or these indent brushes, and I recommend adding these around the seams of your character or object where you want the fabric to appear. There's also the amazing cloth sim brush for adding wrinkles. And then there's actually a lot of asset packs online you can buy, even on Blender Market, where you can add fabric wrinkles and things quite easily. Tip number four, stitches. Adding stitches to your object or your texture can really help add some realism to your fabrics. Now you can go ahead and you can paint those in manually in Blender. You can also create one by kind of stretching out the stroke spacing in the tool set, or you can go ahead and download a stitch brush from an asset pack. I've made one in geometry nodes. I also bought one in the brush strokes. And some other softwares like Substance Painter, for example, had this built in. So hopefully we can see more of these tools coming to Blender in the future. Tip number five, use Sheen. Now the Sheen is part of the principal BSDF node and what its intentional use was for was for adding that Sheen you see across silk fabrics. So you definitely wanna use that if you're creating those fabrics. However, I found that by turning the Sheen up just a little bit on all of my fabric materials, it will actually help kind of catch the light and give a more natural fall off across the fabric. Now it's not technically physically accurate, However, with a more hyper real sense, I found that it reads better as fabric in the final render. Those are some of my tips for improving your fabric renders. So if you wanna check out my asset pack, I actually have a lot of fabric options in there, plus many others over a hundred assets. Thank you for watching and tag me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, so I can see what you're creating from these tutorials.